A few months ago, my uncle found this bench by the side of the road and he got in touch with me, asked me if I wanted it. I said yes, and he dropped it off to me. We haven't really found anywhere where we want to put it in the house and I'm not sure what type of wood this is because I can't really see the wood grain beneath this finish. So I don't know if it's suitable for exterior use. It looks to be some sort of hardwood though, possibly ash. And somebody's gone to a lot of effort to build this. I'm not sure what joinery was used to attach the legs to the top, but it is rock solid. The style of the bench really isn't to our taste. This is what I would class as rustic. And the finish isn't very nice either. It looks like it's had a stain applied and then some sort of varnish over the top. At this point, the timber is worth more to me than the bench itself. So in this video, I'm going to mill this up into some useful pieces of timber. And this gives me an opportunity to make use of my dust containment curtains that I put up in a recent video for the first time. It feels a little bit wrong to be doing this and I hope whoever made this bench doesn't happen to come across this video. So as you can see, the legs were mortise and tenoned. The ends of these boards where the mortises have been cut into them aren't really going to be of much use to me, so I'm going to cut those away. I then reached for my 2100 watt plunge router which has a 50 millimeter flattening bit installed. I use this router purely for flattening slabs. I'll leave links in the description box to the equipment that I'm using. Here I'm setting up my router sled to run on two 3x2s which I needed to shim up a little with scraps of ply just to give enough clearance for the sled to glide over the timber. And then I need to stop the timber from rocking so I hot glue some wedges underneath. I also hot glue the timber to the workbench so it doesn't move around. I set my router bit height so it removes just a little bit of material on the first pass. And as you can see it just took off the very high spots really. Then I can use the turret system to lower the bit by 2mm for each subsequent pass. At this point it's not completely flat but I think I've removed as much as I want to as I want to keep this piece of timber quite thick. So I flip it over and remove the hot glue and then I can take a few passes on the opposite face. So I'm still not sure what wood this is. I thought it could be ash, but when I posted about it on Instagram, a few people suggested it could be elm because there are some darker bits in the grain which aren't normally present in ash, but it remains a mystery. Those curtains did a really good job at containing the dust to the area around my workbench, which means I don't have to spend time cleaning the entire workshop, so that's good. Not that the rest of the workshop was particularly tidy beforehand anyway though. I recently got one of these dust pans that you can use with a broom which I really like, I just wish it was a bit bigger. A quick hoover and then I can move on to thicknessing the slab. I'm running it through so that the side that is fully flattened is face down and the side that had the low spots at each end is the side that is being cut and I'm taking about two millimeters off for each pass to try and get the slab consistent in thickness and also remove all the router bit marks. Looking really nice at this point, but I'd removed about as much thickness as I wanted to. It was down to about 28 millimeters thick. So I decided just to cut away the low spots at the end. And finally, I make a few rip cuts at the table saw to get clean edges and get the board to a consistent width. Sometimes I like to write the dimensions on the end of the boards so it's easy to see without measuring. And there we have a beautiful piece of timber, possibly elm or ash, ready for use in a future project. I did consider milling up the wood that was used to make the legs as well, but as these were all mortised and tenoned, I would have only been left with about 200 millimeters of length, so for me, it wasn't worth it. So 
Some friends of ours recently asked me if I wanted their broken bed frame. Um, this is, I believe, rubber wood, which is not a particularly desirable hardwood. And this is made up of staves of rubber wood. So basically really small bits that have all been finger jointed together. So definitely not particularly exciting, but there's still plenty of usable timber here. There were a few cam locks to undo and then I can start disassembling all the dowel joints. These leg pieces are an awkward shape to make use of, plus too many holes, so they'll get used as firewood. These rails would have held the slats originally, and I can get those unscrewed and then taken off. I don't know what wood this is, but it's far more interesting than the rubber wood. It's a shame there are so many holes in it really, as it's probably not going to be useful for much. I can chop away the ends of the boards. These brackets might be useful for something someday, so I'll keep these too. And here I'm separating the boards that made up the headboard and footboard using a pry bar. And then I get clean edges ripped at the table saw. And there is plenty of wood here ready to use in a project coming very soon to the channel. Timber is getting more and more expensive, so there has never been a better time to salvage it. I've got a couple of videos that might help with that, which I'll leave links to in the description box. The purpose of this video is to hopefully inspire people to recycle, reuse, stop useful materials going to waste or being dumped in a landfill. At the moment, probably 90% of the wood that I have stored is all salvaged. I've got more wood than I actually have space to store, and I'm still either finding or being offered more of it. So there really is plenty of it out there. You just have to look for it. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos if you'd like to help support the channel, and also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. You'll find links to my Patreon page and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.